In January, I actually just closed on my first little rental portfolio. It was eight houses. I paid 400000 for eight houses. They are all cash flowing. My rents hadn't been increased since 2019, so they were under market. So I've increased rents February this month. I did 7400 and my note is 4000 So it's positive cash flow, and I got one vacancy. So even with one vacancy, it still is great cash flow on the current deal. Welcome to the Rental Property Owner and Real Estate Investor Podcast, brought to you by the Rental Property Owners Association, where real estate investors have found success since 1968. I'm your host, Brian Hamrick from Hamrick Investment Group. This episode is sponsored by Green Property Management, managing everything from single family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area. Find out more at greenpropertymgt.com. And RCB and Associates, helping real estate investors and small business owners navigate the complex world of health insurance and Medicare benefits at rcbassociatesllc.com. Well, everyone, we are here at the Midwest REI Conference with one of our favorite people, Ramon Harris. You may recall over the past four or five four years or five at years, this yeah, point, we have been recording a podcast with Ray and just really tracking your progression yep. from owning some trucks that we urge you to get rid of yep, yep, to yep. then buying more trucks and starting a FedEx uh, yep. route, routing business. Yes, and then, of course, all the real estate things yep. that you've been doing. Yep. And so we've got Ramon Harris with us here and then also Justin Workman, who is always part of this conversation That's and brings it. so much value. That's it. So, Ray, Ramon. Ray, I'll just yeah, say Ray. That's right. You're good. We'll go with the normal. Phil, so where were you last year at this yep. time? Because I know FedEx was a big part of your business. Yep. There was also a lot of real estate. Yep. Yeah. Traditionally, you've been a, a rehabber, yep. fix, fix and flipper, yep. and then fix also holding on to some of them yourself. Yes. Where yes. were you last year? And, and then we'll talk about where you are now. Perfect. So yeah. So last year, 2023, my FedEx business was like 3.6 million and we had 34 trucks. And we were rocking and pushing and cranking. I've downsized the business since then. So we've downsized from about 3.6 to about 3 million. It's much more manageable now. It may not sound like a lot, but that, that slight decrease. Wait, downsized from 3.6 yeah, to, to, to 3 million. To to three 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 million. million. And yeah. what does that mean? Like the, so again, just, it's, the it's, volume it's, that you're doing? Routing or trucks that go out the door every day. And mm -hmm. as well as your, that's your revenue. So that's revenue. So in volume, we were doing 3.6 million last year. But now I've condensed that down a little bit and made it a lot more manageable for us to run. Okay. And then just so everyone's tracking, you you own kind of a Fed, several FedEx routes. Yeah. So pretty much how FedEx works is it's contractor based. So we own zip codes. So I own Taylor, Inkster, Southfield, and a few zip codes in Detroit. And my job is to ensure that all the packages in those zip codes get delivered in a timely manner. We take the pictures. We do all of the things that's necessary. And those are my trucks that are actually driving up and down those streets, making those deliveries. So FedEx leases those trucks back or they give us money to put their name on the truck. So they kind of give us a stipend to have their name on them. You're a mm -hmm. mobile advertising part. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's a good partnership and that's cool. So last year I did about five flips, fix and flips. That was cool. We were profitable last year. One of the ones that I listed towards the end of the year, I ended up having to hold which I've never had to do that before. But that started my rental portfolio, which is always a great blessing. So I, I want to get into your rental portfolio. Hit me but, with but it. Let's, uh, yep. One more question about the FedEx. So you talk about downsizing from doing yep. 3.6 million yep. in revenue to three. Yep. Which to most people, they would say, well, you're losing money now. Yeah. But that seems to have made some sort of difference. So what is that difference? Yes, yes, yes. So sometimes in, in our business, areas matter a lot. Again, every zip code, or if you think of every city, they all have their own dynamics. And for Southfield, Southfield is a very business heavy area, but the part that has residential can really blow out. So I got rid of what some may say is the best part of the business, but it was also the most unpredictable because I could have 500 stops going to that area today, or I could have 900 stops. So now I got to run two or three extra trucks for that area, just based on the, where, that's where the people at and they ordering like crazy. So it made my business always have to fluctuate. We were always kind of chasing behind the numbers, if you would say. So now that we have the more just the business heavy area of Southfield, it makes it much more manageable. I know what I'm going up against every day and it allows us to run a lot smoother without having to put out extra resources some days when we don't need to. And 
So not have enough resources on some days. It, it really you, falls in line with like the A20 principle is that 20% of that. the yeah, yeah, business was yeah, yeah, taking up 80% yes, of your time. It was, it was yes. And by cutting yes. that out, it really made yes, life yes, a, yes, lot yes, more a lot more manageable. It's like you're reading my mind. Yeah, no, that's exactly. It. It. <laughs> that's it. But that's exactly it, Justin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, Justin, kind of bring us up to, uh, maybe you remember better our conversation last year. And, and by the way, we re- we've recorded a conversation with, with you, Ray. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, this is probably the been, fifth year. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. It's yes. really fun go to back see and, the progression. Uh, and, yes. Because yeah. essentially, when we found Ray yes. walking around like a lost puppy <laughs> yes. at the conference yeah. years yeah. ago. 29. No, he, 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 he had it going out. He <laughs> no, just he needed did. some. Uh, he did, but he was so busy ideas. in so many different areas yes. that I think that's yeah. where Ray struggles a little bit is focus, which yes. we all do. Yes. We yes. struggle yes. in the focus focus on things. Things get exciting and they get you pumped up yeah. and want you to go out. But yeah, you were in the middle of flipping a bunch of houses. You had goofy money situations. Yes, yes. And yeah, I feel like we kind of helped you streamline some of that a little bit, yeah. find a, a better money source. Yeah. I think we really beat on you over the years about some of the bad investments yeah. and just yeah. cutting the ties with them. Yeah. And it sounds like you've done that along the way yes. a little bit. Yes. I a mean, lot of definitely it. grown. <laughs> yeah. I mean, originally started out, you had some money on some old trucks that were yes. just sitting around. Yes. And then you, were then you bought more trucks. Pants, and then, yeah. <laughs> and now you've run that up into uh, yeah. a lot more trucks and vehicles. But yes. At least they're making but money. But they're making now, money just so. at this point. So yeah. it, it all works out. It's so. great. It's a lot of fun. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can keep going. It's oh, just God. kind of mm-hmm. just checking in. Sure we're actually so recording. yeah. So so last year, like we spoke about, I didn't really have any rentals. I was flipping like crazy, but I didn't have yeah. any rental properties. So in January, I actually just closed on my first little rental portfolio. It was eight houses. I paid four hundred thousand for eight houses. But they are all cash flowing. My rents were hadn't been increased since twenty nineteen, so they were under market. So I've increased rents, and I'm doing like. Eight, well, 70, I did last month, I did, or for February, this month, I did uh, 7,400 and my note is 4,000. So it's positive cash flow and I got one vacancy. So even with one vacancy, it still is great cash flow on the, on the current deal. So I've got myself into the rentals. I like that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I plan on trying to grow my rental portfolio this year to at least 15. So I got nine now and I'm hoping to have 15 by the end of the year. And then make sure our audience knows where you're investing here. Yeah, so I'm in the metro Detroit area. Yeah, so my rental properties, five of them are on the west side of Detroit, four of them on the east side of Detroit. East side is a little bit rough, but all of my houses on the east side are bricks, three bedroom, garages, solid houses. So though they are in those areas, they are still producing. My, my tenants have been there for a long time and they're paying. So it's just kind of one of those things where now I just go in and ask them, do you need anything? I'm raising the rent hundred dollars, and they gave me a little punch list. I went in and knocked out the punch lists for everybody. I raised the rents a hundred dollars on all of them, and boom, here we are. So I like that. I like that game. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I will be looking into more of that uh, this year. I've always said if you're going to invest in Detroit, you, yeah. you need to invest with someone, or you need to know what's going on in Detroit. Yes, absolutely. I think your one block is different from the oh, next block, yeah, so is. you never know unless if you're from outside of Detroit, you don't know what you're really. Man, getting into, it's all but you know place. Detroit. I know it very intimately. well. Yes. So right now we're working on, we're flipping in an area that is up and coming. It's 48214. And this area is right outside of what's called Indian Village and English Village. I was talking to your dad, Rick, yesterday, and he shouted out Sister Pie. So it's a hipster restaurant that is out there that people are going to in this area. But right past it, like you just said, it's a war zone right now. So we're in that area saying, okay, these houses are 17, 1800 square feet. They have a third floor on them where I can add a fifth bedroom. They're four, they're, right now they're four ones. So I'm looking at them saying, I'm going to do five twos and just do a half on the first floor because they don't have no bathrooms on the first floor. So add a half bath on the first. And we're thinking that we can get these houses to sell for 200,000. One mile away is 400 to 500,000 in Indian Village. Uh, they already put the bike lanes in to get to my neighborhood from those areas. And it's literally a one mile bike ride, if you want to say. So right now, our primary focus with flipping is we have a lot of houses in this targeted area. One of my partners has taken a bad investment from the land bank and he wants me to turn it around. So that's pretty much my project for this year. We have a 70-30 split. So it's a great deal for me to really work my crews and putting together products that can help bring up this area and raise the comps uh, for everybody. A house just went pending on a corner of my street a duplex for 260. 
blew our mind and it, and it actually went pending fast. But again, it just shows that Detroit is, even in the areas that still look crazy. And when you pull up, you'll be like, what is happening right now? But these houses are beautiful. They're just run down, but they just need some love. So that's kind of what the focus is for 2024 as far as the flips. Our goal is eight to 12 this year, right in this exact na- neighborhood. So I'm really only focusing right here this year. So it's a lot more targeted. And then we already have the houses. So it's really just continuing the pattern of rehab. And then all of the houses are kind of the same. So it's kind of like running the same play. I'm easy to stamp yeah, them out and yeah, get the same. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm running the fifth floor. I mean, I'm sorry, the third floor play on all of them. Add in the first floor bath. That bathroom changes based on the floor plan and the layout, where we put it. But what? Go ahead. What's the cost on adding the fifth bedroom? Boom. So great question. So right now it's costing me, I'm only doing a bedroom and closet. So I'm not doing a bathroom yeah. up there on that third level. But you got uh, some small framing, drywall, drywall, electrical. Wall. Yeah. So say 8500 What's that add to the back end value of that? Huh? So I'm thinking that it's going to give us an additional 30000 And the reason why is... That fifth bedroom? Yes. Because in Detroit, Either they're small houses or they're duplexes, which again, make your house small again in this particular area that we're in. So by making these houses big, you're going to attract the person who can't afford Indian Village because all of those houses are five, six, seven bedrooms. So you're attracting that family that just can't afford that. So you're giving them that same big house without putting them a mile down the street. So it's it's really targeting families. And that's really what we want to try to look at is saying, okay, you got a big family, you got three kids, all y'all can be on one floor or you could go up or you could play with it, send the oldest kid to the fifth and give yourself freedom. Now you got an office on one of the bedrooms that's on that floor. So just giving ourselves the creativity to be as close to as possible to Indian Village as we can. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The dynamics of what that neighborhood brings and they giving you four or $500,000 comps. Yeah. So it's like our comps should be easy if we put out a comparable product. So again, I'm now taking the house from 2,200 square, I'm sorry, 1,760 to 2,200 square feet. So I gained 500 square feet. So again, it's also going to help with my price per square footage. So again, even at $100 a square foot, which is insane, I'm still at my 220. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, just mathematically at $100 a square foot, I'm at 220. You can't get a house. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So no, the, I, the I'm math saying. is math. And, oh, that's well, really that's how what you got to break it down to always. No. It's just the math. It it's is, it's just math. It's just math. Is it, it, is it the square foot? Yeah. 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 square foot. That's, yeah. Yeah. Price. that's it. Again, we get these houses low because we got them from the land bank. So again, it's like, okay, now we can put money into them to get them where they need to be out of there. And that's kind of what I'm focusing on. So first quarter, I should have two and a half complete is the goal. So by March, end of March, we should have two and a half. So that's the goal. We rocking right now. Ballpark numbers on them? Like what's buy costs? Yeah, so I'm all in. Yeah, so we got them. So I mean, ballpark. ballpark. I know they're going to vary. Yeah, you good. We're just. Yeah, rough numbers will say 50 purchase, 70 rehab. Okay. So I'm in for one. sell for 200. 200, 220. We're going to see where we end up. Uh, You know what I'm saying? But again, it's, I think we got 14 houses over there. So again, if we can raise those kinds. Yeah. Everything will work again as far as quantity, cranking them, even though it ain't the best return. But again, it's like, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Especially if I can stay in one neighborhood and keep my crews. They literally one block away. You know, the two that we're doing right now. across the street. Yeah. And and one, the next one that we're starting is across the street. So a lady is moving out on March 1st. And she's right across the street from my Mont Claire. So again, we'll start down. But again, it's literally like that. So we're moving like we're moving new bills. It's really just old houses. They need everything. But we're getting it done, though. So it's cool. Well, like, you have some great opportunities with the volume. That's it. That people don't realize, too. That's it. When you're doing flips, it's not HGTV. These are not designer houses. You're yeah. going to stamp out the exact same That's product it. every time. <laughs> so That's talking it. to some of the distributors in the area yep. on buying flooring yep. for 10 houses. Yep. Yep. Yes, you're going to get them delivered at different dates, stuff yep. like that. Yep. But buying the same product again and again, that's again what I work you on. can get the right Good volume deals. discounts and yeah. people don't often realize. That's what I need to look at. Even the same thing with like your lumber yards. You're going to build essentially a stud package for yep. framing so out that upstairs that fifth, bedroom. Yep. That same stud package can be stamped out for every that's house in the future. <laughs> and if you deal with a lumber yard and tell them, hey, you got 10 of these that we need 500 yeah. acres. We need yeah. so many headers. I definitely so are you doing doors. No, I'm Home Depot. All of that Shout stuff will save you thousands of yeah. dollars. I'm just Home Depot on it turn. just because it's just, it's convenient. 
it, on the it, small it scale, but like you yeah. say, if I'm really thinking, well, and that's Home Depot has a good contractors program. They do. They look us out. Yeah, they look us out. When you get to a certain volume, there's going to be better yeah. opportunities. Yes, out there. yeah, no, Home and I haven't really still so retail focused. Yeah. Then they not the best option. Normal flip. Home Depot is a great place to go buy. So, so what? does Ray need to do specifically to it. leverage what you just He's said? He's to start reaching out to some of the bigger suppliers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you need to go to some of the bigger lumber yards, yeah. some of the bigger flooring contract, yeah. bigger flooring stores, yeah. and almost some of the local distributors. Yeah. Because that's where we would found a lot of things when we were really doing a lot of flips is we could buy pallets of flooring at a that's substantial it. discount mm-hmm. over buying from Home Depot. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about Green Property Management. Not only do they manage everything from single-family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area, they also manage my entire portfolio. So I can tell you from personal experience that their unique flat fee management style is worth a closer look. If you feel that your property isn't operating to its fullest potential, then Green Property Management can help you take a holistic approach that will save you money, eliminate your headaches, and increase your net income. And if you're a property property manager interested in applying green property management's model, give them a call at 1-866-95-GREEN or visit them on the web at greenpropertymgt.com. If you're thinking of leaving your W-2 job and becoming a full-time real estate investor, one of the greatest costs you must consider is health care for you and your family. When I made this transition myself, I found the whole health care insurance process to be confusing and frustrating. That's why I'm glad I met Chad Creasy at RCB and Associates. Chad is a professional health insurance agent who helps real estate investors and small business owners understand and choose their best health care options. And best of all, his services are covered by the insurance company and won't cost you a dime. If you live in Michigan and are expecting a change in your health care insurance coverage for any reason or losing employer coverage or transitioning into Medicare, then you owe it to yourself to contact Chad Creasy at rcbassociatesllc.com. Let me break it down to more actionable for Ray. Because Ray's a busy man. Yeah. He's, he's oh, got a FedEx sure. business. I like he's, this stuff. He's got other stuff that he hasn't even mentioned I'm about yet. to tell you all so, something else too. So <laughs> could he get someone to go do that for him? Like, who would he say, hey, go get those discounts for him? Yeah. You could. You definitely could. I think the opportunity cost is fairly big because it is literally a phone call with a salesman at those companies. Right. And it's just telling them, it's a half hour conversation of, yeah. hey, this is kind of our game plan. Yeah. Make it's that worth the time. initial connection, yeah. that and established it connection, because it's going to be a long-term relationship. We're going to deal with this salesperson for hopefully years to come as Heck you're growing yeah. that end of the business. But yes, once you've established the connection, there'd be nothing yeah. wrong with sending out your contractor yeah. to go give yeah. the yeah. material yeah. list. Send exactly. your GC then to, to oh. actually implement the order. Yeah. But to make the initial connection, I think oh, no, you're I'm talking about go, thousands make of dollars for a Savings. phone call. Yeah, no, it's yeah. worth it's worth the it's worth that time. No, that makes you know? sense. That absolutely but, makes sense. So right now, Thank you. I'm going to definitely implement that. That is amazing. Because yeah. again, you just don't, you're running. So you don't really think about the small, no. like, and I know I got to buy a bunch of toilets. And it's not nickels like, and dimes. You, yeah. You know, you know, thousands of dollars. Yeah, I didn't if think about it like that. Into a house and do 10 houses this year, that's $700,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. of cost. Yeah. There's a substantial savings in there. Yeah. Granted, a third of it's material cost. You know that. Yep. So we're breaking that down. Yep. It's a couple hundred grand of material, but that can, can still really yeah. add up depending it's on your where bottom you're line. No, I love, I love that. I love that. That's awesome. And that's, again, actionable. I can, I can go implement. So yeah, that's, that's it's beautiful. Quick phone call. So and right it's just now, a phone call. That's yeah. all it has. Like you say to the sales team. So yeah. right now, I'm looking at buying a, paint, a commercial painting business. So this business is a fire sale. Because the owner is in, ha- having health issues, but they have 1.3 million in contracts this year. They have a team already in place, uh, 11 guys, have one office lady, have a building, and uh, that thing looked like it's going to be a. What's the, the uh, sales uh, price? 350. Is it a and franchise? And I get the building. No, it's just an independent dude been in, running okay. the business for 25 years. So y'all, he just got failing health, don't have no kids, and he want to just kind of get rid of the bit, but he got these contracts that he need to finish. The real problem is that they had a cash flow issue. So as his health has been failing, they've been having to take more money out of the business to put towards his health. So now they can't afford to front these jobs. In a commercial painting, you pretty much, what I'm learning is that you're like 60 to 75 days out from your payment. 
So you work for a month and then request the invoice and then you get 45 days is how they've been getting paid. So they are saying that they're about two or three weeks before they're solvent. So now this is where we're sliding in saying, okay, we'll inject the cash. We'll take over this building. We'll take over the contracts. So we're assigning the contracts that they currently have over to us. So we're working on that as we speak, but that's kind of what I'm in the middle of right now. Besides for the last year where they've taken money out, yep. what is this true cash flow of this business? What's this, the it of? So it, again, it's, it's hard because he's been taking owner draws. The accounting is crazy, but, but no, they've been the doing owner draws. Is he paying himself a reasonable salary? No salary. Is he no paying salary. himself a hundred grand? Nope. He's no, paying his, he pay his wife. He, Yes. What's his owner? He paying himself like 120. Okay. And then his wife got like a 65,000 salary. Okay. But she works in the business. She don't do nothing. She doesn't do anything. So he's paying himself 180. So he's paying himself 180. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's a factor. When you look at businesses, it's essentially you've got to pay that owner. Good. You've got to pay to replace that person to put them in the business, whether it's you or somebody else. Somebody, yeah. You need to get a reasonable salary. That's it. Yeah. So are they profitable above and beyond that 180? Are they actually yeah. making money or is that the only money that business is making? No, it make money. I just think that they, that it's a lot of waste, if you say. So all of the guys are, it's a lot of issues that we got to fix, but a lot of the guys are 1099, but yep. they're treating them like employees. So they're hourly, they showing up on the, at the, they doing all these things wrong. So we're going to have to switch everybody to W2 and or at least these people that are showing up at the exact same time, leaving at the same time and taking a lunch, like they work for us. So we got to figure that part out and kind of change the dynamic of how they're being paid. But there's also a lot of like, turning in a timesheet because it's handwritten that I worked eight hours, but like we popped up at a job the other day and there was nobody there. It was really like, that's 2.30. So what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? That's that's what's going on with the eight hours. Only two, I got two in it. So it's stuff like that, that we know we're going to be able to, because they know nobody's been watching. Yeah, but the dude's been sick, so they've been able to kind of take advantage. So that's where we're looking at and saying, okay, there's opportunity here. And even on the jobs that they're doing, there's a 20 to 30% profit margin still baked into every contract that they were expecting to make, even with their workers with working the, the way that they're working. Yeah. So it's like, okay, if we can increase their work flow, make sure I get eight hours out of them instead of six or five and a half. I mean, now what could I really be turning out type of situation? You know what I'm saying? A lot of the guys have been there for over eight years. It's like eight to 15 years is the time frame. But again, they've been working with this guy. So again, we got to still figure out what is that going to look like? Will everybody stay? They're saying, of course they will. They, this is all they know is paint. Yeah. They've been working here so long, they're not going nowhere. As long as we got a check on Friday. So we got to well, still figure out those dynamics. But And some will stay and some will go. And that's, that's the reality of and, it. And, that's the, and it may be good. You're going to rock the boat. That's so it. you yeah. got to expect some to move on and that's, that's it. may get better. At that is. That is. And it's it, painful in the meantime. Like it, it will be, yeah. But I don't even think so because, again, I have, we got our own paint crews. So it's really going to be, like me and my partner's goal is to kind of watch for 30 to 60 days. As these new contracts start, we start putting some of our people on the new contracts and just watch the contracts that they currently have going and just see how they roll. Will they end up being profitable at the pace and the rate that they're going before we start trying to rock? The goal is to try to keep them as consistent or as the same as we possibly can for an initial 30 to 60 days. Just because, again, they do got a lot of contracts on the books, and I don't want to mess it up to where they all leave. And I'm like, holy crap, how do we fulfill this? And to their quality. We still got to learn the quality that they provide. You know what I'm saying? So it's still a lot of learning to do, but it's moving very quickly. Oh, and, and by the way, this is, why, this is what makes this story even more important. My lawyer I met here uh-huh. last year, he was sitting at one of the, just a random table. He was here for something else, saw mm-hmm. that it was a real estate event. He came up here, he's from Detroit, and he's the one who brought me that deal. Uh-huh, so it great. still spun back around uh-huh. to our POA. Yeah, that's a that's great it. plug. So <laughs> yeah, because we are at the Midwest REI conference. That's it. You go to MidwestREIConference.com. Yeah. It, it used to be the RPOA oh, annual bad, conference. Yeah, so we yeah. kind of switched the names, my bad. But uh, yeah, that's the kind of connections you make that's here. It. I mean, you've made, I think it. you've made some great connections great here connections. that have really just helped you that's transform it. your business. That one right but, I, but I have to ask, buying this paint business, Talk to me. how is it helping your current business? No, are you we vertically integrating or are you just to, buying a, a separate business? We're about to probably get rid of the FedEx thing. So I listed Southfield last week with a broker. So we're going to slowly, because again, it's a 10% business with a lot of risk, a lot of employees, a lot of moving parts. So if I can get into something like paint, mm-hmm. I know, and now I can control my sales where FedEx is kind of fixed. I think that I can make this paint thing be the number one thing. Right. That, that's really what I think. Like that, 
we already do construction. We already do renovation. So this is just a like a battery pack to what we do. And it's a business that's already in place. So now we can just kind of improve systems and kind of take it to the moon. It's kind of what we're thinking. So our goal is to run a 30% business. <laughs> so, so Ray, it's always good to see your success. Oh man, I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. Brian, you are awesome. This conference is awesome. Justin, thank you as always. It's continuing to meet people. So I'm going to continue to come here because every time I come, I'll meet somebody that's cool, awesome. I met guys last night at the Speakeasy that were just amazing. So I just still encourage people to come out here and check this conference out annually because there's always something different that you can learn, whether it be meeting a lawyer or meeting your next investor. So I appreciate you guys. Yeah, well, it's, it's just been great to see how you've kind of shared your business with us. That's it. Throughout the years, it endured our uh, feedback. <laughs> our criticism. Our that's criticism, it. That's especially it. Yeah. his. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the harsh beatings you've taken over the that's years it. when that's we tell you you're an idiot for owning some of this stuff. That's or why it. are you yeah. still doing this? Yeah. Like, yeah. But it's not profitable. Yeah, but you're, yeah. You, you, you charge you've charged forward and you've done an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just love the high soul and really admire it. You've done amazing stuff Thank along you. the way. Thank it's you. been a fun journey for us to sit back and watch. Get updated on every year. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. No. I appreciate it, guys. You're Thank doing you. great. Yeah. And, and yeah. And thanks for sharing this with our audience. And it's always uh, one of my favorite things about coming to this conference <laughs> now to talk to you and that's it. Get the update because it's always exciting. That's it. It's something, never going, something going on, baby. Yeah. Something going on. Thank right. you, guys. Thank you. Thank and you. It, yeah. And, and just one last plug yeah. for this is 2024. We're at yep. the Midwest REI conference. But next year, it'll be 2025, and we'll be doing the Midwest REI conference once again. So definitely it. check us out. I mean, it's a lot of great uh, people here. And as you can see from Ray, a lot of great contacts are being made. I want to thank everybody for listening to this episode. I'm your host, Brian Hamrick from Hamrick Investment Group. And you can find out more about me by going to higinvestor.com. That's H-I-G-investor.com.